Manchester United 1, Real Vallecano 1 and that wraps up Everton Arles pre-season. We lost 1-0 to Atletico Madrid. We had two draws, one being Aston Villa 2-2 and the other of course being 1-1 with Real Vallecano. But we did beat Melbourne victory 4-1, Crystal Palace 3-1 and of course Liverpool 4-0. So obviously we didn't win our last three games of pre-season but actually it's only pre-season and we're going to look at the positives here and then we're going to dive into the negatives. And the overall positive was Alejandro Garnacho. For me, was my man of the match. He was my stand-up player. He's super impressive and he's shown a Langer levels. He's shown um, and Chong levels because Chong was awful today. And I say this now, stick Garnacho on the bench versus Brighton because I don't want to see Alanga coming on. I want to see Garnacho coming on because he has that ability. The way that Garnacho runs and drives at players, Garnacho is so good on the ball. He's always looking to make that dribble, always looking to take on players, always looking to make things happen and Langer's a great athlete but he doesn't have that flair he can't take on players he's one dimensional Garnacho's got the skill he can shoot he can pass he can dribble Garnacho's got a bit of everything I think Ama Diallo and Garnacho were a lot more impressive than Chong and Langer this week uh, Pelestri was also impressive he was injured I think Ahmad came on got his goal I thought Ahmad been a bit disappointing this pre-season but I thought he was good today but the standout youngster and he's only played one game was Garnacho very very lively another standout youngster James Garner but I want to quickly talk about Lissandra Martinez before I get to James Garner Lissandra Martinez had his first start for Manchester United today and he was absolutely incredible I was really really impressed with Lissandra Martinez I've got his game numbers here he had 100% tackles won 100% final third passing accuracy 96% pass accuracy five one possession five times one clearance one block that's been stat line Dave that was um, Lissandra Martinez in the opening 60 odd minutes for Manchester United he was so, so good, Lissandra Martinez, today. He's just so good on the ball. People talk about five foot nine and all of that. You didn't even notice he was five foot nine. He was strong. He was physical. He was winning about the ball. You know, he doesn't take any shit, Lissandra Martinez. He was absolutely incredible today. I could see why Ten Hag has a liking to him. Ericsson, Martinez and Malasia, the three new signings, whenever I've seen them play, I've been so, so impressed with them. And I'm not surprised they've been so impressed with them because they were players Ten Hag wanted. They were players Ten Hag told Man United to buy. And they were players Ten Hag desperately wanted. And I think Ten Hag just knows a good player when he sees one. Ten Hag's a very intelligent guy. And the Sandra Martinez, and I know this sounds crazy, he gives he reminds me a bit of Ruben Diaz of his composure on the ball, uh, how good he is, and also he's a left foot centre back, which just meant it was easier to play out from the back. It means we're better in possession because he's left foot centre back, but he was just so comfortable on the ball and he had tempo in his passes. And I did find in that first half, although I don't think Manchester United had the most amazing performance today, although I don't think we were brilliant, we played with this tempo on the ball because you could tell there was just an intelligence and ability and a technical ability in a lot of the players like the Sandra Martinez. Donny, Ericsson, Garner, they're all quite technically gifted players, even Garnacho, especially on that left-hand side, we played with some fluidity and tempo, but the problem was you could tell that those players hadn't played together before, and you could tell that a lot of those players weren't match sharp, Donny's barely played in a while, Ericsson's had time out, Garnacho hadn't been involved in the pre-season tours, was Martin as his first start, I thought all of those players that I named were brilliant, but I think you know, there were some really good individual performances today. And Martinez, Garner and Garnacho are the three standout individual performances I pick out from today. I did think Ericsson was quite good. I think Laird definitely grew into the game. But you could tell where I think it went wrong is this team couldn't quite connect together. There was good individual performances, but it just wasn't quite clicking as a team. The system wasn't quite clicking. We left a lot of space for Rav Alakana to come in. I think the passing was a little bit off. I thought Varane defensively was solid. Varane's passing was all over the shop. I think for the goal, Tellez left them way too much space. Varane and Laird maybe could have done a little bit better for the goal. I think that Chong just not at the level. I think Chong was the worst player on the pitch. I thought Tellez was pretty poor. I think everyone else was decent today. Uh, I think Donny started all right. I looked quite good. Donny Eriksson. And then Donny just became a passenger, a ghost in the game. I am a bit worried about Van der Beek. But I think we're not playing into his strength. And I think, again, he's not match sharp and it will take time with Van der Beek. But I think where the problem was is you could tell this team hadn't played much together. I think that's why we're giving the ball away a little bit. And I, look, I'm, in general, I'm happy with what I saw. I think there were some great stand-up performances. I think it's pre-season, so of course a lot of these players aren't going to be sharp. A lot of these players haven't played in a while and haven't played together. And it was rusty, but I saw something we could build off. I saw potential. I saw something we could build off. But also we saw some good individual players. That's going to give Ten Hag something to think about. Ericsson. You know, to Ericsson or Bruno, Tenor's really got to think about that. The Sandra Martinez is going to come into the team soon. You know, Garnacho, Garnacho looking like Elanga might not be as safe as he thought it was as that bench option. You know, James Garner or McTominay. I thought, I thought James Garner showed McTominay levels. I've actually got a stat for you here. So James Garner made 43 passes today with 98% accuracy. Okay, and this is Scott McTominay made 18 passes last game with 89% accuracy. 
the difference between James Garner and Scott McTominay is not only technical ability, James Garner's got high IQ, he's got technical ability. We struggle with Scott McTominay because he doesn't want the ball. When Maguire has the ball, and I will defend Maguire on this, you know, Maguire has to pass back to De Gea who kicks it out. Because Scott McTominay is not making himself available in the field for Maguire to pass to. McTominay hides behind players. He's not running. He's not eager to get the ball. He doesn't like to be on the ball. James Garner always wants the ball. Whenever the defender's on the ball, whenever Martin is on the ball, James Garner's running, making himself available. Even if it's in a tight space, even if James Garner's picking up the ball in a comfortable position, he wants the ball and he's playing the ball. And his pass accuracy was brilliant. His reading the game was brilliant. I think he's a player Ten Hag's going to take a bit of liking to because Frankie de Jong does that. And we know how much Ten Hag wants de Jong. Where Scott McTominay hides. And James Garner, you know, 86% final third pass accuracy, attempted six passes. And then obviously 98% pass accuracy with the 42 passes. Obviously, Scott McTominay did have 100% final third pass accuracy. But Scott McTominay made 18 passes with 89% accuracy. You know, I will get those stats up on my screen if I remember. But there was just a big difference between Garner and McTominay. And I'm not trying to go in on McTominay. I'm not trying to be too critical of Scott McTominay. But James Garner, for me, is a lot better player than Scott McTominay. And he showed him levels today. Now, I still think James Garner needs a Premier League blown because I think he deserves to play week in, week out in the Premier League. But with the current midfield options we have, I'd probably go Garner, Fred, Ericsson, probably, probably for the first game of the season, or Garner, Head, Bruno, and then involve Ericsson if there's an injury to one of the front three. You know, do you know what I mean? Because that's what I see from pre-season. I know it's only one game and Sadan Ball was a brilliant against Melbourne victory and then, you know, the you've dropped off a bit. But I just think he probably is our best defensive option. Now, talking of United, I am worried for Brighton. I am. We couldn't beat Raul Valacana. We couldn't beat Madrid. We couldn't beat Villa. I am worried for Brighton. They're, they give us a tough game. They're a good team. team. The reason I'm worried is because there's not much depth in attack. You know, there's Ronaldo, who I don't think will be fully fit and available for Brighton, but we might see him on the bench. There's the front three, which is brilliant, but there's Garnacho, Ronaldo on the bench. I mean, there's Alanga as well, and like, I don't think Alanga's it. Our midfield is still McFred and Bruno, and McFred and Bruno as a midfield doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's not good enough. There's Garner, there's Donny, there's Ericsson. There are options there, but we're missing that player that goes, boom, that's what we'll build our midfield around, and that is a Dion. Now, there could be a big Dion news update today, and I will let you know if there is, uh, because Barcelona need to register the players today. I cannot believe I'm saying this, but the thing I'm least worried about this season is defence. We conceded the most goals ever in the Premier League last season, had our worst defensive record last season, was shocking in defence last season. But I don't, I'm not worried about the defence. I'm worried about the midfield, I'm worried about the attack. Malassia really impressed me at left back. It's going to give Luke Shaw some good competition. I still rate Luke Shaw, I think he's a good player. Martinez, from what I've seen today, absolutely happy with Martinez. I think Maguire will be much improved under Ten Hag. I think Varane's a good player. I think Lindelof's a decent player. Right back, Delo, if he continues the good form of pre-season, fine. But wan Saka, Laird. I thought Laird was all right today, but he's going out on low. wan is going to be sold. We do need a bit of depth there. De Gea, I'm a little bit concerned about adapting to Ten Hag's style. Uh, Ronaldo, I'm not concerned about. I don't think Ronaldo was amazing today, but he didn't have many options. He kept coming short to get the ball. But overall, very, very happy with the game. Garner made 44 passes with a 96% uh, pass accuracy and seven of those passes into the final third. Let me read my notes. I thought I liked, I liked how Garnacho was beating his man one-on-one. -on -one. I liked Garnacho's uh, composure in the final third. But I have to say Chong, and I did write this down, Chong let down Garnacho a lot today. Garnacho playing it into Chong, and what the fuck was Chong doing? Honestly, Garnacho could have got two assists today. Martin has generally gave me Ruben Diaz vibes, class on the ball. I think, and I will say this now, and look, come back to this because I might look like a mug. Van Dijk came into Liverpool, and they, they had this big boost with Van Dijk coming into their defence. Um... um Ruben Diaz came into Man City and they had this big boost going into the defence. I'm not saying Sandra Martin is his Van Dijk or Ruben Diaz level, but I think signing a good centre-back that knows that can do exactly what the manager wants can make such a difference to the side, especially when you're playing out from the back. And I literally, I've watched the Sandra Martin's play for 60 minutes and I am sold on him. I love the Sandra Martin's. I think he's absolutely freaking class from what I've seen of him. I thought Ericsson controlling the game from deep, brilliant. I think Donny, there's still a player in there. We saw bits of Donny today, but he just fell off in the game as well. I think Tellez needs to go. I think Amar was much more impressive this game, but I still think he needs to loan. I think Garnacho needs to be the player off the bench and not Alanga. I think Chong needs to go. And yeah, overall, the whole team performance wasn't amazing, but it's pre-season. It's about giving valuable minutes to first-team players, youth players. Ten are getting a bit more to see what youth players could add. I think it's all about the minutes. It's all about the momentum, and that's what pre-season's for. Smash your like, subscribe if you're new. We've got a pre-season roundup coming out tomorrow. See you then. Bye.